Hello everyone, and welcome back to the second Italian Focus Street Dev Diary talking about the alternative history options we have coming up for Italy. Much in a similar theme to how we saw with the previous Italian Dev Diary, I think this one is going to be long. Very long. Very, very, very long. So, keeping in mind with that, I'm going to try and keep things as hip hoppity hop as I possibly can and just move from topic to topic without too much harshness. So hopefully that should make an easier viewing experience. So without stalling anymore, let's head into the Dev Diary. So the Dev Diary begins by reminding us that we can go back and see the previous historical path Dev Diary for Italy. And I also have a video about that if you wanted to go see it. But today we're going to be covering the alternative history and that means it's going to be the full view of the focus tree, which we, we don't see. We see the words full focus tree. So never mind. But I assume what we're getting is a, pic, uh, a focus tree that's so big it cannot fit into one picture. So a very huge focus tree indeed. Moving on from this, we have some preamble talking about how the history of Mussolini ruling Italy is sort of much precedented at this time period. Mussolini already been in power for 10 years now, meaning that the moments where maybe the changes of Italy could have gone in a different direction are quite a few. They talk about how at one point Italy guaranteed Austria's independence from Hitler and also things to do with the stress of front. So there are a lot of alternative paths that we could have gone down and uh, well, we ended up here. So arguably in the form of one of the most likely slash historically possible forms of alt history we could go down is the one where the fascist council or the grand council of fascists ousted Italy as they did so in 1943 after the invasion of Sicily. Beginning in 1936 with the invasion of Ethiopia, in order to head down the path of ousting Mussolini, you're probably going to have to struggle in Ethiopia to show the weakness of the leader. Having struggled in Ethiopia, you'll find plenty of opportunity to undermine the Duce and begin your work to supplant him. To make this easier, you'll also have more decisions opening up the more you go down this focus tree path to really get rid of Mussolini as quickly as possible. Here we can see criticize the war effort and slander the Duce, which is probably calling him cringe. Regardless of whether you won in Ethiopia or lost in Ethiopia or whatever the outcome was being, the general focus is going to be making sure Mussolini is not the central role in power so you can eventually convene the Grand Council and decide his fate. Once you've deposed Mussolini by taking the aptly named Depose Mussolini Focus, you'll then have what I think are three key options. You'll have two leaders within the Grand Council of Fascists party who you can choose between, who were both potential successors to Il Duce at some point, those being Italo Balbo and Dino Grandi, as well as some options to give executive power to the king. We begin by looking at the alternative leaders we have for the Grand Council. So while both of these people will have their own individual branches, they also have a shared sub-branch in between them, because well, they're still both part of the Grand Council, so they'll have some shared interest. These will include stop the squandering with all the money disappearing under the Mussolini rule, as well as consolidating power so that you can eventually purge the party of all the Mussolini loyalists and eventually decide what you'll do with the big man himself. When it comes to purging, you'll have to decide who you're going to go with. The advisors, the generals, or you could just get everybody. Of course, the more people you purge, the less people you'll have available, so you should probably be careful about who you are going to purge. In terms of the fate of Mussolini, you have the options to let him stand trial, execute him, or assassinate him if you don't want to have the baggage of responsibility. All of these things in the end are generally just trying to push uh, the country more towards your favour. Once all is said and done, you'll have to decide about where you're going to take your newfound fascist Italy next. We have Divino Duce, which is where you're going to try and emulate the power and prestige by emulating yourself as that with one of your two new leaders. I guess some things never change. Or you can take the position of going down the greater purpose and perhaps focusing too much on one individual was not the way to go and more so consolidating power among a collective of people who all rally behind the same idea. I will say this Divino Duce, does that national spirit give you plus 10% recruitable population. That has to be one of the highest recruitable population buffs I've, I've seen in the game. That is a pretty insane buff. So, candidate number one for your replacement Duce is Italo Balbo, who was previously one of the central figures in getting Mussolini back to power in 1922. It's described that he had more focus on allying the UK as opposed to the Germans, seeing that Italy would become some kind of puppet state under the German rule, but also he was an aviator, 
serving in the Italian Air Force and having big ideas to modernise the army. Because of his experience in the military and air force, his sub-branch focuses are going to be focused towards that precisely, uh, buffs towards your air force and army, and some of the changes he had want to make. In the end we can see this is giving us stuff like air mission efficiency, more ground support, some org, some armour attack, and all good stuff to make a more mobile, interwoven army and air force. Another sub-branch for Balbo involves him going off to Libya as he was made to become Libya's governor at one point by Mussolini. In this sense you're going to be going to Libya as um, sort of as Balbo ruling this time and with that comes much more focus on building up the country in ways that wouldn't have been available otherwise. Once you've picked between oil for your planes or steel for your tanks you then have to decide with Novus Ordo to get some state modifiers and also some irregular infantry. It's not quite the same as Quarrying Estate, but um, it's pretty good all the same. Moving on to our alternative option, we have Dino Grande, who, if Balbo is seen as a potential successor, then I guess Dino Grande is seen as a potential opposition successor. And many times Mussolini thought that Grande was working to undermine Mussolini, and so he sent him away to become a foreign ambassador to the UK, but he didn't like that either, so brought him back again. And we can see that with his traits of the silver tongue, giving him better improved relations opinion, maintain cost, and also a nice justify war goal time. The first sub-branch we see with Dino Grande is following on from his position as an ambassador to the UK, but also working alongside France to boost your relationships with one of these two powers, with the Anglo-Italian Pact and the Franco-Italian Pact. The British-Italian Pact will give you some boosts towards aircraft, ships as well as some nice opinion stuff as a shared research program. The French program will give you access to research bonuses for armour technology and infantry weapons, which both of you will benefit from. Once the research has been completed, you can then sign off the pact, which in this case with Britain would be a non-aggression pact, which you can later decide is going to involve stabbing them in the back or actually solidifying yourselves as either non-aggressive allies or maybe working towards something greater. With all that completed, the work begins to proclaim the Italian Empire, which is kind of ensuring that the gains you have made, I'm thinking Eritrea, Libya, Somalia, are fully recognised by other major nations. With that, you get to guarantee any other major that guarantees you, in sort of a shared pact. You also have the ability to, it will be less costly to annex territories on the African continent. So I think this is going to be working very heavily with the new peace conference system and how claims are going to be made in advance to decide what will and will not be more expensive and cheap, so very much so interwoven with the new DLC mechanic. You also get Impero Italiano, which gives you some non-core manpower as well as some nice buffs on the side. Not sure if they're as good as the one we saw for uh, the fourth beach with um, Balbo, but pretty good all the same. And finally, Dio Grande becomes father of the empire. Congrats to him. Moving on to the second unique path for Grande, if Balbo was more so focused on the army and air force, I guess Grande would have to be more focused on internal constructive efforts. As such, you'll have abilities to improve the economy and its industries. The meritocracy focus is seen to give us some pretty decent buffs all across the board. Um, research speed, another operative slot, as well as two advisors. Um, the political power gain is always really good. Uh, the nuclear research speed, on the other hand, well, that's definitely a late game thing, isn't it? You also get a general and, I think, a potential operative, although whether they're called James Bond winky face remains to be seen. This all culminates in the end with expanded corporatism. With great success, you've managed to add expanded corporatism to many states all across Italy, which gives you some local factories plus 10%, compliance growth speed and resource gain efficiency, as well as lots of mills. So pretty good to build up an army. Moving on to the balance of power, because we saw that Mussolini was a central figurehead in the balance of power between him and the Grand Council, it also makes sense that the new uh, leaders you could get with the alternative branch also have their own balance of power. And as we can see, the more you push up on the modifier, for Balbo, you get army experience gain and air experience gain, as well as a reduction on lack of resource penalty and factory output. But there are some minor debuffs in there too. Grandi, on the other hand, has good buff for construction speed, economy law cost, I mean, lots of law costs, but the uh, training time is a little ow, but still pretty good all the same. So before we move on to the king, I do have to say, it does come across just from an initial reaction that Balbo is coming off as a lot stronger um, all across the board. So 
I'll be interesting to see if that's true in gameplay, but yeah, definitely seems stronger. Okay, that's enough talking about boring potential alt history, let's talk about the fun alt history. Monarchies. Overpowered monarchies. <laughs> So talking about monarchies and other things, we are brought to the initial disclaimer that everything in here is not just work in progress, but super, super work in progress, meaning they are very actively prepared to change things that we see here. So take what you see with a hint of salt, and also be prepared to give recommendations in the forum posts if you think something can be changed for the better, because if there was ever a time where I thought they were going to make changes and accommodations, it's probably going to be now. So this section begins by talking about Emmanuel III, text fix here. He begins as the soldier king, giving him some experience gain, stability, and just very small but not negligible buffs. In short, we get told about his history leading Italy through multiple different wars, gaining him the nickname the soldier king, as well as having a recurring theme of every time Italy annexed territory, he would be proclaimed emperor of that territory. So Ethiopia in 1936, and Albania after the <laughs> Albanian parliament proclaimed him as king of Albania. Because of this, once you've taken the path of ousting Mussolini, you can stick the monarch in charge instead with the former Victor Emmanuel, and with that, anything you have taken, such as Ethiopia or Albania, can be added to him as traits. With that established, let's take a look at the monarchist focus tree branch. The thing I initially notice is that the branch to like work alongside the British or the French and proclaim the Italian Empire is still open to the monarchist side, so one of the coolest parts of that branch is also open to the monarchists. Interesting. Following on from the right of that, you'll have access to the opening industrial branch of the monarchy tree, which talks about extraction processes, giving you some iron, some oil, and some good stuff down the way. In addition, we have the new corporations focus, which is going to give you six civilian factories, but also make it harder to construct future civilian factories. So you should probably go for it once you've decided that you're gonna switch over from building civs to mills, and then you take it for that extra boost. We also get the mobilize the railway guns focus, which will spawn four old railway guns, which we used during the Great War. They weren't mobilized during World War II, but um, it's cool that they've made an appearance and that features from previous DLCs are reoccurring here. We also have new forms of weaponry, which is, as they describe, a pretty basic national spirit, giving some research bonus, but also helping build up the nuclear power of Italy. Industry aside, what is the king going to do? And it, we see that there is an initial choice between revoke the Akerbo law and power to the king. On the right is the monarchist path with power to the king, which I guess is kind of given in the name, in which you'll have some standard stuff in the form of stability, political power bonuses, but you also get a decision where you can abdicate to allow your son to take over whenever you want. Of course, being a monarchist isn't quite the same as being a fascist, although there will be similar tendencies, so it will be up to you to decide whether you're going to try and work alongside the black shirts or disband them to hit fascism where it hurts. At the far right of the focus tree branch, we see seek papal support and a couple more focuses after that. Their key focus is gonna be about working with the balance of power because even, even the king has balance of power issues to deal with. And if you go down it, you're going to be replacing the Grand Council of Fascism with the Papal States instead, so you uh, might want to keep an eye on his holiness, just in case. On the flip side, we have the Revoke the Akerbo Law, which I probably said wrong, but it is what it is, which leads to a more conservative democracy, so I'm imagining the traditional, let's say British, way of doing things. Probably not quite the same, all things considered, but perhaps a better comparison than anything else. With this form, we can see Christian democracy as a focus, which gives you some popularity in democracy, as well as making democratic your country's ideology. But regardless of how you've managed to get down here, whether it was more democratic roots or absolute power of the king, we find ourselves at setting the course and down to Mare Nostrum. These are your late game sub-branches for the monarchist path and are, as they describe, slightly different old-fashioned and meme -y. Mare Nostrum being the path to reform the Roman Empire, which is, I think, a staple of Paradox games. There's always some way to reform the Roman Empire, and this is going to be how. So in this branch, you'll get some military and resistance bonuses, which will help with your expansion, uh, which should, as they describe, culminate with the Roman Empire formable nation, as well as getting the options to do things like puppet states in Iberia and expand your faction beyond. 
there's also the ability to encourage South American nations to join your eventual alliance. It's a small thing to note, but this does also mean that the uh, formable nation for Rome has very probably been properly fixed. Um, I don't know if you remember, but they added lots of states in previous DLCs, and that meant that the old formable nations didn't actually get all of the states. Specifically, I remember in Turkey. So this should be a positive change for that. This is going to be a bit of a stretch, but you should be able to see that regardless of whether you've gone down the historical Mussolini branch or you've gone down the old history branch, both of these options should be available to you at the bottom, whether you decide to go with Mare Nostrum and Rome or a Greater Italy, which was on the left and talked about previously. We're heading to the end of this side of the focus tree, but we get to see some a few more additional things, including some portraits that they've got coming up for some new characters. We get to see what in Prince Umberto looks like, a one, 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 one. But also some of the cool art they've got along the side. In addition, we're also getting some new work to flesh out the decision categories relating to formables and releasables. Oh my goodness, this is big for me, as this is literally one of my most favorite things to play in the game. So Africa Oriental Italiana, probably said wrong, is now a releasable colonial tag. You can do this after completing the Focus Ministry of Italian Africa and the new Emperor of Ethiopia. Apparently this is a very unique nation in that it doesn't necessarily have cause on the states that it has, but it has a national spirit, advisors and country leader that help provide reliance um, anti-resistance stuff, compliance in the territory so that they can actually hold the stuff even though they don't core it. This feels to me how you're not necessarily working with an interim government but you've kind of created a systematic controlling organization that runs the territory so the country is still underneath, hidden away, oppressed we could say, but the organization you've left in charge of that country is now running it even though they have no cause. Moving on, we see that the Balkan Diplomacy category also got expanded with new decisions for that. We've got some really interesting stuff here too. Um, demanding things, supporting people in exchange for giving away territory, working with Turkey or Greece. Interesting. In addition, forming Greater Italy is also a cosmetic tag that will change your country to be called Greater Italy, as well as give you a national spirit which should help buff some stuff up for you. Plus 15% Division Org. That seems pretty powerful, goodness me. And with that all said, we come to the halfway point. We've done all of the alt, fash and monarchist paths. Take a breather, take a cup of tea, have a relax. And as we move on to the left side of the focus tree. So the anti-fascist Republican branch takes the form of looking at all the different opposing ideological groups. We're talking communists, socialists, conservative Christian Democrats, liberals, Republicans, monarchists, anarchists, and how most of them gathered in the Committee for National Liberation. Our all history path takes the position of looking at what if they could have gained power earlier by capitalizing on a defeat in Ethiopia? And so we begin. So to access the anti-fascist initial branch, you're gonna have to try and lose in Ethiopia. If you're doing too well or you've succeeded, you're really gonna have to wait until the war in Ethiopia is officially over before you can push down there. The beginning of the branch talks about how if you're going to go down this path, you're gonna have to have a civil war. This will involve organizing strikes in the north, taking farmland potentially, but in general uniting the opposition in preparation to win. If you won the war in Ethiopia, however, and you weren't able to have a cataclysmic failure, people will have, have more confidence in Mussolini, and so the top three focuses won't be available to you, meaning you won't have access to a greater power to overthrow him. It's gonna be slightly harder. In the end, you'll have to end up with Defy the Duce, where you'll decide whether you want to have a democratic or communist committee, which will be important for later, and so the civil war will begin. Moving down, you're going to have to work alongside the bourgeoisie, seize old equipment that you've got from prior wars, and in general work towards the Italian Republic, where the king will kindly be asked to retire. Sad to see him go. F in chat. Once you've achieved that, won the civil war, which is just over, I guess. I guess it's going to be a relatively short civil war because it doesn't have a ton of focuses regarding it, unlike the Soviet civil war, which was, that was, that was a big war. <laughs> but regardless, once you've done it, you'll end up with our old friend, the balance of power. And because your recently formed government is both made of communists and democrats, depending on which side you picked, 
it is the oppositionary side that you're going to be working against in this balance of power between communists and democrats. So in total, we can see that the communist branch is called the Popular Front, which is more wide than it is long. On the left, we have the Garibaldi Legion, which is talking about the army and is a battalion of, quote, mostly Italian volunteer units of international brigades who fought in the Spanish Civil War. Completing this focus will give you access to send more volunteers, um, air volunteers, and generally make it easier to help the Spanish Republic win. Although I question whether you would have successfully completed your civil war by then, but assuming that it's a relatively easy civil war to do, then I see no reason why it shouldn't be possible. Moving down, we have focuses working towards getting more manpower, partisan activity in your occupied states and getting new generals, as well as having the black shirt become red shirt instead. Um, and we even get to see a, a cool looking 3D model. The branch called Leader Steps Forward is gonna be focusing on picking what, who you want as your communist leader. In total, there will be two default options, as well as a potential third leader in the form of Antonio Gramsci. Gramsci? Gramsci. Apparently he's an Italian Marxist philosopher and politician who was founder of the Communist Party of Italy and very critical of Mussolini. The reason he is a potential leader is that at the time of this happening, he was in prison and in a pretty critical state. So you're gonna to have to work quickly to win the civil war, get the communists in power and get him out of prison so that you can heal him back up and have him as your leader. Time is of the essence. In the center, we see the common ground focuses, which are generally about working towards getting the military back on your side, as well as crushing the mafia who are a little bit too rampant at this point in time. The final part of the communist branch is a, is a classic. It's an old favorite. It's the, do you side with the Soviets or do you choose to go alone? Um, <laughs> it does feel like all communist paths in Hoi 4 result in this ultimate choice, common turn or no common turn. Why is there never the option to join with Paraguay? Where's my Paraguay common turn? That's the real question. Before we go away from the communist path, we get to see some friends who were in appear as partisan generals, including women, who I'm not sure what the count is on how many women are in Hoi Four, but we definitely see two new women here. Okay, and next up we have the democratic branch. So we open up by seeing that in general, we're gonna see some more shared ground with the communist side of the branch, as well as the ability to very quickly aid the Spanish Republic as best you can. Although it doesn't seem to be as powerful as the communist side from just early onset looking, but hey, maybe it's some pretty good aid. Once you take the Republicans leadership, this will send you down into the central focus of the democratic focus tree, where again, you will have to choose your leader. Here we can see Ferruccio Parri, who I think is the current democratic leader for Italy, as well as Ivano Bonomi. Moving further down, we get to social stability, which is your late game democratic branch, focusing on trying to keep the peace and democracy in Europe, which surely will be easy with Adolf Hitler so close. Without being told too much about the branch, we can see that there seems to be the option to re-establish old alliances, which is probably, and this is just a guess, joining the allies, because, you know, France, Britain, stress of front, traditional, but also Italia Liberia, which I would assume is involving protecting those nations that are otherwise unprotected. Maybe Czechoslovakia? The last side of this branch is anti-colonialism branch, which is about abolishing the colonies that you do have or trying to at least work towards making them more fair to the people who live there. If you choose to abolish the colonies, it's going to work similarly to how we saw with the French Union focus in which they can hold a referendum and decide whether they want to stay with you or go completely alone. And that will be determined on things such as compliance, regional development, once you've done that, you can work towards getting more industrial um, potential in these regions, as well as getting the focus condemn colonialism to get some war goals against other colonial powers in Africa. So that would be France, Britain, and Belgium, and potentially Portugal. Although I doubt you'd manage to go after Spain. They hold so little. I do find it interesting that it's a priority of a democratic Italy in 1913, let's say eight, to go after anti-colonial policy on the precipice of world war with Adolf Hitler. But who am I to judge the foreign policy of Italy? On the flip side, we have new colonial policies, which are gonna be focusing at releasing your colonies as puppets 
and then creating confederations of states which allow cooperation and development between them. You also have negotiations with Albania, which does have the potential to let you try and annex or puppet Albania, so taking that particular state is still up for grabs. Once all is said and done, you reach the bottom of that focus tree path and get to decide whether you're going to get some more troops and go to war with the people who are holding things and have refused to release the territories and really put a stop to those colonial powers. Oof. And with that, I think we are coming to the end of this dev diary. My goodness, just as long as I, I recalled it being. So here are a massive collection of different advisors that you're potentially going to get as you go through different campaigns. I think a lot more effort has been put into these these days. It's, it's really good, isn't it? We also see that we're getting some new operatives for Italy if you're choosing to hanker down on a massive operative spy agency game. And also we get to see some new 3D models they've been working on, including Man on Horse, Man on Camel, Italians T-Posing. And with that, we have the final dev diary covered for Italy. Goodness me, that's everything. Now, I say final dev diary because as we said, work in progress means it's not impossible we'll have a third Italian dev diary where they tell us that they've actually changed things about this focus tree and it's gonna work differently. And again, that's probably gonna depend on your feedback. So if you do have changes, now is the time to say them. I think my initial thought um, in terms of key thing is the Rome tree, <laughs> it was gonna be there. I'm interested to see how it performs as more individual focuses. I do feel like that wasn't properly discussed and could have been shown a bit more. And in terms of the democratic tree, I guess I'm disappointed there's nothing to do with the European Union. We've covered France, the Benelux has already been started, and Germany basically doesn't have much to do with democracy in that form. So I did have some hopes that with Italy, we would have seen a potential working with France and the Benelux to kind of form a unified front against Germany and eventually uniting to annex Germany and then use that as the basis to form the European Union as a Italian French push because that would be all the nations you need to form the European Union. So I'm disappointed as I say that there's not an option to sort of semi peacefully form the EU. Um, I guess you're going to have to go down the path of going to war with France and the Benelux early, then going democratic and then going after Germany. So yeah, slightly disappointed, maybe something to consider as a potential focus tree avenue. Um, not necessarily make it difficult or easy, but I mean, if Germany has annexed um, France and calls Vichy French, it's still very much so possible. Anyway, I'll stop ranting. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much to listening to my rambling. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this was somewhat informative. If you liked, feel free to like, feel free to subscribe. More, I'm sure, is on the way. And I do believe it's Switzerland next week. So I'll see you all then. Bella ciao, Bella ciao, Bella ciao, 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 bye.